So, in this video, roll steer in BMAX salts. What it is, what causes it, and what it causes. Let's start off with what roll steer is. So, the clue is in the title to a certain extent. As a vehicle is cornering, obviously the body tends to roll towards the outside of the corner. Now, in beam axle vehicles, that can lead to axle steer. And the reason it leads to axle steer is down to the kinematics of the linkage that are holding the axles in place under the vehicle. Let's talk a little bit about understeer and oversteer. So, as you enter a bend, you obviously turn the steering and you set the steered wheels up to an angle that is appropriate for the radius of the bend. So, the amount you steer the wheels depends on how tight the corner is. Tighter corner, more, more wheel angle. Understeer is a condition in which rather than following uh, the radius that has been set by the angle of the steered wheels, the vehicle follows a bigger radius. So you've gone to turn around a 50 metre radius bend, and because of understeer, you've ended up following a 75 metre radius bend. Oversteer is the opposite. So again, you've set the steering to follow a 50 metre radius bend, but instead you follow a 25 metre radius bend. So in understeer, you get less steering than you anticipated. The vehicle literally understeers. And in oversteer, you get more steering than you expected. The vehicle oversteers. So what's the relationship between uh, roll steer and understeer or oversteer? And which one are you more likely to get? The reason that roll steer happens is because of the angles of the longitudinal arms that are holding the axle in place uh, longitudinally, stopping it moving forwards and backwards. So as the vehicle rolls, the arm on the outside gets pushed up and the arm on the inside drops down. So the, the wheel on the outside of the turn uh, goes into bump, the wheel on the inside goes into rebound. Now, the action of the arms, one going up and one going down, pushes one side of the axle forwards and the other side of the axle back. So you end up with axle steer. Now, generally speaking, in off-road vehicles at least, uh, the, the radius arms, the longitudinal arms, tend to point downhill from the chassis. And that means that you're always going to get roll oversteer with an off-road vehicle. Now, roll oversteer is an unstable condition. So as it occurs, what happens is you turn into the bend, you, you set the steering up to follow that 50 meter radius curve, and the vehicle starts to follow that curve, but as it rolls, that causes the axles to steer, and now you start following a, a tighter curve. You start following a 25 meter curve. Now, of course, that causes more body roll because you're now going around a tighter corner and that in turn causes more axle steering and, and so on and so on uh, until potentially you lose control of the vehicle. Understeer is a more stable condition, generally. Most passenger cars tend to be set up to understeer because understeer is generally a benign condition. You turn the steering to go around a certain curve and you end up with a bit less steering than you expected. And what tends to happen is you then apply a bit more steering and you, you get the curvature that you intended in the first place. Now, obviously, at its uh, most extreme, understeer can cause you to just continue in a straight line and you punch a big hole in the hedge uh, on the outside of the corner. But generally speaking, understeer is more benign than oversteer. So how do you set a vehicle up to get roll understeer? Well, the answer is that you, you do the opposite of what you would normally do. You start off with your longitudinal arms uh, pointing slightly uphill. And what that means is as you come into the corner, the body rolls, uh, the wheel on the outside uh, goes up uh, and that pulls it back towards the chassis and the wheel on the, on the inside goes down and that pushes it forward. So your axle steers in the opposite way. And the same thing is happening at the back, of course. Your, your, arm, your longitudinal arms usually are pointing outwards from the centre of the chassis. 
Now obviously there are some fairly sensible ground clearance based reasons why you might not necessarily want to do that, but at least bear it in mind, and certainly bear in mind that if you're going to lift your suspension and end up with radius arms that are pointing steeply downhill, that could lead to some interesting handling problems. What's the ideal condition then? The ideal condition really is that you start with your radius arms, your longitudinal arms, parallel to the surface. Now, the reason you should do that is that as the body rolls, if the arms start off parallel to the surface, as the body rolls, the outside arm goes up and that pulls the, the wheel back towards the chassis, and the inside, wheel, uh, the inside arm goes down and that also pulls the wheel back towards the chassis. So rather than steering, the axle has just moved backwards. So if possible, you should try and set, the, set your longitudinal arms parallel to the surface. Now, there are some caveats to that, and that's down to the detailed kinematics of the suspension and where the roll centre of the suspension is. Note here where I've run my parallel line. Uh, the arms actually do appear to be pointing a little bit downhill, but you need to think about where the axle is going in relation to the chassis. So the, my line runs through the centre of the, the bush on the chassis and through the centre of the axle. The actual shape of the arm isn't really important. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more off-road vehicle engineering content. Thanks for watching.